This record-breaking heat in Siberia and has contributed to nearly 300 wildfires at the country's northern wilderness. And it does not just stop there. Data also continues to show no improvement with the Arctic sea ice conditions around Siberia. In fact, they are currently at the lowest level on record. Climate scientist Zach Labe joins us now to discuss Siberia as a bellwether for the Earth's climate. It's so great to have you, Zach. Good to see you, Zach. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Of mm -hmm. course, just give people an update of what is going on and why it is so troubling to people like you. Yes, so over the last six months, there's been a very persistent weather pattern sort of over parts of Siberia. Um, temperatures have been nearly 10 degrees above average for the last six months over this area, which is really extreme when you consider that that average is over this six month period and it has contributed to a lot of different environmental hazards We've seen wildfires, as you've mentioned. We've seen melting sea ice. It's also been thinning along the coastline. There's been record temperatures that over 100 degrees in one town last month. So we've just seen all of these perfect conditions come together for this extreme event. And, and Zach, this is where I'm interested in as well. Can you characterize this in the context of history? How, how extreme is what we're seeing right now? Everybody's saying since we've measured, what does it mean for the climate, the microclimate both up there and broadly some of our observations around the planet? Siberia is a really interesting place because they actually in a normal year experience some of the largest temperature swings going from well below zero during the winter to temperatures in the 90s. Um, in the history of weather observations in Siberia. But what's really unique about this event is the persistence of the event. And this warmth has been sort of just shifting around slightly over the last couple months, but it's really anomalous how it just has stayed over this one particular region. And why is it that um, climate scientists focus so much on that Arctic sea ice? Why does it have a disproportionate impact on our climate? The Arctic's really important because sea ice acts as a reflector. So you have incoming sunlight, and then the sea ice is bright and white, particularly when it has lots of snow on top of it. So as that incoming sunlight is coming towards the surface, the sea ice normally helps to reflect it. However, due to this sort of long-term trend of climate warming, which is particularly amplified in the Arctic, we're seeing losses and losses of sea ice year after year in these long-term trends. So now as that incoming sunlight is heading towards the surface of the Arctic, instead of being reflected by the bright white surface, now it's being absorbed in the Arctic Ocean, which is a dark sort of color. And then that heat is released into the atmosphere, helping to accelerate further Arctic warming. Hmm. So, yeah, I'd, I'd heard um, some about this, like a runaway kind of global warming theory. Is that what seems to be in the cards right now? I mean... How worried should we be about this particular development in the context of everything else that's going on? For decades, our climate models, even the most primitive of climate models, have shown that the Arctic is going to warm faster than the rest of the planet. So this particular event, while concerning, as a climate scientist, I'm not very surprised to see it. We see the Arctic warming in general, but year to year there's variations due to natural variability in weather. So this extreme event has been amplified by the background warming of Arctic climate change, but it's not necessarily an indicator of some tipping point. It's, it's a fluctuation or a, a weather event that has been boosted, you could say, by Arctic climate change. So I think it's, it's in our expectations to see events like this and them to become more frequent going forward into the future with more Arctic warming. And when you say tipping point, what, do you, what exactly do you mean by that? Uh, tipping point, I hear a lot of times of concern in the public that is we reach this point in the climate system where you can't sort of reverse the warming. And I, I think it's a bit misleading because um, in our climate system, this warming is going to increase threats more and more. But it's, it's not necessarily irreversible. Um, any reduction in greenhouse gases that we make can prevent more climate warming. So I think tipping point is an active area for science and trying to understand what that means in terms of changes in ice, like over Greenland. But I, I don't think it's that particular worry should be something we're concerned about for climate. And instead that we should just focus on these long-term trends and what we can do to limit the amount of future warming going forward.
And is there anything we can say meaningfully about, you know, reductions in greenhouse gases during the coronavirus crisis? Interestingly, there has been a documented reduction in greenhouse gases, but it's still very small and temporary in the climate system. In fact, by next year, I would expect us to be back to the levels we were um, previously for, for instance, carbon dioxide. So we, it's interesting as sort of to see how the climate system, if it's going to respond to this small reduction, but in the grand scheme of things, it it's not going to make a difference in our okay. current trend. And finally, yeah. Zach, if this won't make a difference, what will make uh, the sort of difference that we would need to start to reverse the trends that we've been seeing? I think we really need systematic changes. And I'm not a policy expert and don't work in that field, but we really need to think of this on a large scale basis for how to reduce greenhouse gases. And areas like the Arctic will see sea ice come back more and more if we reduce the amount of warming. So for instance, sea ice, if it cools down enough, it's going to return in the Arctic Ocean. So anything we can do on a, a large scale basis across the world will help areas like in Siberia and the Arctic. Well, I think what you're saying is incredibly important, both in terms of the alarm that people should feel about the trend that we're heading on, but also that you shouldn't just abandon hope. You shouldn't have a nihilistic view. We can, in fact, make changes that will reverse these trends. Um, Zach, thank you so much. It's so great to have your expertise today. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll have more rising for you after this.